بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد ما شاء الله it's always uh, beautiful to see the masjid full and see the kids in the masjid I uh, would like to thank all the brothers who are organizing the youth activities here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, from them their effort, efforts, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma Ameen. It's just very beautiful when you come to the masjid and see the masjid is full of uh, kids, mashallah, and their families with them. So what are we going to do tonight is, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to talk to you about this. The reason why I want to talk to you about this is uh, it is something that's new happening in our community and, and there's a lot of effort and work that's been put into achieving something like this. There is actually uh, interfaith dialogue. So we have a series of four lectures uh, between Muslims and the Christians and what I'm going to do tonight inshallah ta'ala is to try to talk to you from Islamic perspective about about this event and how do we see it and we have here some copies if you want to get some of them inshallah ta'ala you can just hand it out to the brothers and if you want to get some copies inshallah ta'ala so we have here four uh, lectures. The first one is going to be, uh, should we even be talking and listening to each other, meaning Muslims and the Christians. The second one is on peace and persecution. Third one is about living together. And the fourth one is about common words. Brother, you need to take one. Please give it to Brother Suhail. He wants one. <coughs> So before we talk, some people might assume that I was requested to speak about this topic. No, of course, I'm not requested to speak about it. It's just something that I wanted to discuss with you because I know we have different views. People come from different countries and in some countries, uh, I'm not going to mention any countries, any names. In some countries, people come with the mentality that any interfaith dialogue, it has to be a debate. We have, when we talk about uh, Muslims and the Christians together, it has to be a kind of debate. And then at the end of the event, people are going to convert to, for example, Islam, and then we're going to see Allahu Akbar. But in some other countries, that's not what people do. People try to look for common words. Like in Egypt, for example, we have the, at Al Azhar, uh, the center of interreligious dialogue, for example. We try to look for the common words. And what is the common word? What is that common understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Al Imran, verse 64? <laughs> exactly. So we're going to Allah to mention this right now. But I, I just recited the ayat in uh, Surah, uh, surah Al Imran, in Surah Al Isha here. First ayah was talking about uh, the common word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the common word. And then the second, uh, the second, uh, I mean, the second raka'ah was. Just to indicate to people that when we speak about interfaith dialogue, it's not uh, that we're going to compromise in our religion. That's a principle. Uh, nobody is going to compromise on anything. It's just a matter of you can believe in whatever you want to believe in. Uh, and they can believe in whatever they want to believe in. But at the end of the day, we have to respect each other. That is the, the whole point of this uh, interfaith dialogue and that's how I see it and if I see anything else that's being said or being done I'm gonna speak up immediately so we're not there to compromise on our religion we're just there to try to find common understanding to how to live with people in peace and find some commonalities between each other I would like to start with uh, saying having different faiths is so normal that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed his universe 
we are created different and we cannot be all following one religion that's not something that can even happen in the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah Hud when he spoke about this he said وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ the ayah ends here وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Surah Hud is surah number 11 in the Quran verse uh, 118 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says had your Lord so willed he would have certainly made humanity one single community of believers if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to create the entire world following one religion he would have done it subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the only one who can do that no one else can do it قال الله عز وجل لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم even if you were to spend everything on the surface of this earth to bring people's hearts together you want to be able to do it and then he said ولكن الله ألف بينهم the only one who can bring people's hearts together and make them follow one religion is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Brothers, it's very important for me to share something like you with, uh, with, uh, like this with you. Because you might uh, have been hearing people are talking about, oh, there's an interfaith dialogue going in the, in the community. Some people disagree with this. Some people are supportive of the idea. So it's very important for me to talk to you about it. Because I always tell people we need to shift from multiple conversations to one conversation. What I say in private is what I say in public. What I say to my community members, Muslims, is exactly what I say in front of other people. You just have to choose your words and respect others. That you, what, that's what you have to do. You don't have to compromise in anything. We have our belief and they have their own belief. Uh, the interfaith dialogue, I don't know why it's even called interfaith dialogue because interfaith dialogue includes a lot of uh, different uh, types of conversations. But anyways, that's how they, uh, that's the title that they have chosen for it. It has two kinds, like our conversation or our dialogue with other than Muslims is of two kinds. The first kind when we speak about al-umur al-dunyawiyya al-bahta, when we speak about Worldly matters only. We don't speak about anything religious. We don't speak about anything theological. We only speak about worldly affairs. Trying to find how to live together, uh, together in peace, how to be good to your neighbors, how to speak to people, how to do community service together. It's all about worldly affairs. There is nothing about religion. That is one type. The second type is when we speak about religious matters. We have to differentiate between them. Uh, by the way, the first type of conversation, every one of us here in this room, in this masjid right now, in, uh, he already does it. Because we live in this country, we live with, with non-Muslims, and we interact with them, we dialogue with them, we, con we have conversations with them every single day. Even myself in the masjid. Even myself in the masjid. They come a lot to visit our masajid, and to observe our prayers, and to ask questions, and we have our open houses. And it's happening all over North America, even in the masjid. I don't work with them outside, but they come to me to, in the masjid. So we already do it. We already live with people with, uh, in peace. We already try to find harmony. We already try to find commonalities to do community service together. The second type is when we speak about religious matters. And of course, in this regard, we have some stuff that we agree on and we have some other things that we disagree on. So when it comes to religious dialogue with other than Muslims, it's of two kinds. The first one is الدعوة والمشاركة. 
is when we invite people and do da'wah to them and try to collaborate and work with them. When, while we are speaking about religious aspects. Like for example, you, you, you know we have here the, the, uh, the uh, 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 religion, uh, it's called World Religion Day. World Religion Day. It happens every year in Regina over here. And uh, by the way, it happens all over uh, uh, the world, the World Religion Day. And what happens is, we go from different uh, 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 religions, different faiths, and they have a representative from every faith. And what we do is to choose something common, because that's the first type of the religious dialogue, to look for commonalities. <laughs> you cannot hear me? <laughs> Closer. So what we do over there is we try to talk, for example, about we're going to choose a, 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 choose a theme for this year. The, the theme is going to be, for example, about justice. So every representative from different religions, he comes on the stage and he speaks for two, three, four minutes about justice from his religion perspective. That is something that we all agree on. We speak, for example, about mercy towards other people. And that is something that we all agree on. We speak about love, community service. And that is something that we all agree on. And that is the first type of religious interfaith dialogue. And we have a truth in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for example, in the ayah that we're talking about, the ayah that I recited the first rak'ah, in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, ayah 64. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to call the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, and by the way, we are also people of the scripture, because we have Al-Quran. So we call them, Come to a common understanding between us and you. This term of kalima sawa is an Arabic term. It's a very wide term. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, He mentioned one of its dimensions. The one that you're talking about one of its dimensions but it has some other dimensions a common understanding between us and you that you shall worship no one we shall worship no one except one god that we shall take no partners with him and none of us shall take others as lords instead of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's the first type of religious interfaith dialogue. What I'm doing here is I am representing my religion. I'm inviting them to my religion. And at the same time, I said the word common understanding. I'm trying to find something common like the other example that I just said. Like talking about mercy, that's also a common word. Talking about justice, that's also a common word. Talking about patience, community service, that's also a common word. So the word the kalima sawa is an Arabic term. It's so wide. Allah mentioned here one of its dimensions. But it also has some other dimensions by default. We have this in our religions. We don't even have to talk about that. So kalima in sawa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in Surah Al-Silat. Surah Al-Silat is number 41 in ayah 33. Qala wa man ahsanu qawlan. That's how you open you open a dialogue with non-Muslims and you speak about religious matters. How? وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in his speech that someone, than someone who invites for the sake of his Lord and he does righteous deeds and he announces and says that I am among the Muslims those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because sub 
Al Muslim is the one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how we open a conversation with other than Muslims and we still speak about religious matters. By finding a common ground. So now, again, two types of, con of conversations dunyawi, worldly affairs. Number two is dini, religious matters. When it comes to religious matters, it's of two kinds. To find something that we all agree on, the common understanding. The second type of it is to speak about our differences. And that's what some people really love. You know why they love it? Because they came from that background, which is okay. That's also in our religion. They came from a background that they like to debate. That's good. Debate is not something bad. But it has to be in the proper way. And you, uh, you have to be educated enough, qualified enough because before you start speaking about differences between your faith and the others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about al-mujadala in the Quran. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawidati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and debate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about debate here. The second type of religious interfaith dialogue is debate. وَجَادِلْهُمْ And debate and engage with them in the best manner. So if you're going to debate with other people, you have to do it in the best manner. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ do not start insulting them or criticizing their religion if it's not a debate. Otherwise, they will insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back. But if it's a debate, it's a different sitting. And what makes me actually unhappy sometimes is when I'm invited to an interfaith dialogue and they announce it's a conversation. And, now, and when we go there, you find out it's a debate. <laughs> that is what I don't like. You need to tell me from the beginning what I'm gonna do, uh, what I'm gonna, what I'm here to do. Am I here to fight? Am I here to debate? Or am I here just to share something with you and you try to find the common ground with me to work together? And sometimes they say it's a conversation, but it's a hidden debate. So you have to be aware of all these types of debates, the hidden debates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ do not debate with the people of the scripture. And then he made an exception. Originally, we're not supposed to, to debate. Because it's going to lead to fights. But he said, but if you have to, do it in the best manner. And then he said another exception. Except for those among them who act wrongfully. Some people are trying to, they're just there to get you. You go to have a, a conversation with them and they start to sell their religion in a hidden way. I have not prepared for that. I'm here for some other reasons. I'm here to share my religion with you, not for you to sell your religion to others under the name of Interfaith dialogue, conversation. So we have different kinds of interfaith dialogue. We have to be very careful when we deal with them. <laughs> Did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do that? Because you know the first lecture that I'm going to be speaking at is are we supposed to even be talking or listening to one another? The question is, did Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to open a conversation with the people of the scripture? Did he used to have some debates with them alayhi wa sallam? Let's go back to his seerah. And the answer is absolutely yes. How did he used to open a conversation with them? How did he used to debate with them? What are the means? In which way he used to do it? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first way is he used to go to Nawadihim wa Aswaqihim. He used to, to, do, to go to their community centers, to go to the marketplace, 
to go to their houses and to visit the sick sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the intention of giving da'wah and he used sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know if you go to any book of Syria, you will find that section kutubun nabi wa rasailuh ila al muluki wal umara you will find the letters and the books that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has sent to the different community leaders and the kings sallallahu alayhi wasallam in any book of sirah just to go back to any book of sirah Rasulullah you know nowadays we they email us they want we want to have an interfaith dialogue in the past Rasulullah used to mail them and he used to have some translators alayhi salatu wasallam like Zayyidna Zayd ibn Thabit. He learned the language of the Jews in two weeks. He mastered that language in two weeks to be able to be the translator of Rasulullah in that interfaith dialogue. What else did he used to do? He used to welcome them. Where did he used to receive uh, the non Muslims? Where do you think he used to receive them? When a delegation or a group of non-Muslims comes to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, where do you think he, he hosted them? Where? Any answer? Huh? In the masjid. In the masjid of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know when I came here first? And we received some requests from students at the university or uh, 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 people coming from some churches. Do you want to come observe our prayers and learn about Islam? Or when we have an open house, some people are just so mad for no reason. Why are you mad? I don't understand. If they come into the masjid and they put on hijab and they're, they're not wearing their shoes, they have respect to the masjid, they sit in the back. Rasulullah did that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nasara Najran. Delegation of the Christians of, from the Roman Empire, they came to his masjid, alayhi salatu was salam. You know what? At some points, they had to pray. They had, they had to pray. It was maybe a Sunday or something. And they went to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taking the permission to pray and to do the rituals according to their traditions. What did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Okay, please just to go outside of the masjid. Or you know what? There's a, a church here across the street. You can go do this over there. What did he do? He allowed them to do their prayers according to their tradition in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go to the books of Syria and we'll find this. That's how he opens the conversation. Otherwise, they're not going to listen to the Quran. He used to go to the Kaaba when they, when they worshipped the idols. He used to have idols around the Kaaba. Rasulullah goes there and recites the Quran. Some of the Sahaba used to go recite the Quran there and they get beaten up every single time and they still go. They don't care. They want them to listen to the Quran. So when you have a chance, you, you cannot go to their synagogues, you cannot go to their churches, you cannot go to their clubs, you cannot do that. You have a chance. Do you want to come to your masjid? You have a chance. Do you want to open a conversation with you? And I don't use that chance. I have to be the first one to accept and the first one to participate and the first one to speak and the first one to prepare myself and the first one to attend. That's what he did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also he used, to, at the same time, he used to debate with their scholars and their priests. And he used to read their books with the intention of debating with them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have different kinds of conversations. We have stuff we agree on, and we have stuff we disagree on. They are human beings. There is nothing to be scared of. We are not going to compromise in our religion. We just recited in Surah Al-Isha, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ as I told you, we have two different types of mentalities. Some people came from countries that they have the mentality of debating and fighting with other religions. But some people come from other, other communities, other countries, where we just try to find the common understanding and live with people in peace. We only discuss our differences in uh, private settings. Only private academic settings, not in public. Two different ideologies. 
Remember when uh, uh, Najashi of uh, Abyssinia, Abyssinia of Al-Habasha, Nabi Allah what did he say to the Sahaba? <coughs> he said, go to Abyssinia. فَإِنَّ عِنْدَهُمْ مَلِكٌ لَا يُظْلَمُ عِنْدَهُ أَحَدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ he said, go to, because, because of the persecution with the Arab disbelievers against Muslims, Nabi Muhammad invited them to go to Abyssinia. Does this remind you of something that's happening nowadays? People nowadays, they, do you think some people actually migrate to Canada because of the persecution they have in their countries? And they found here a just ruler? Yes or no? Alhamdulillah. That's, what, that's the answer I'm looking for. Because that's the reality. Because you know what? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not give us one example of a community to live in. He gave us four examples of four different communities. Some people try to limit the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu or the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of those four communities, one of those four environments, which is what? The last example when he was living in Al Medina in a Muslim state and every other religions are minorities. That's what I want to see. But that's not the only environment that Rasulullah lived in. He lived in Mecca when the whole community was against him and his Sahaba. Right or wrong? One example. So a Muslim can live in a country where everyone is against him, even the, uh, the, 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 the leaders and the government. Yes, a Muslim can live there because Rasulullah did that. Go to his seerah and do what he did and how he responded to that. Second example, Al-Habasha. Non-Muslim country, but the ruler is accepting. He's a just ruler, just like here. The third example, Al-Madina Awalan. When he was at Al-Madina at the beginning, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was persecution. Diverse community, but people are against him and he's a minority. Muslims are minorities. Al Medina Akhiran, the second example of Al Medina itself, he was the majority with his community and the rest of them were the minorities. So a Muslim can live in all these different environments, not only one of them. Some people want to live in only one environment. No, 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 you can't. You used to go wherever Ardullahi wa sa'a. The land of Allah is so vast for you. Just go migrate if you are facing persecution in your country. And live anywhere. Go back to the sunnah of Rasulullah. You will find in his life the way how to live in any, any community. Whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim, whether they love you or not, whether they accept you or not. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot just limit our life to I want it to be an Islamic state and we are the majority. That, that, that might not happen at all. In some places. Uh, I will just end with five shifts that we need to go through. We're, we're going to have to go through five shifts if you want to have a healthy interfaith dialogue. Very, very, very fast, inshallah, I'm just going to read the headlines. One, we have to shift from what you're doing wrong to what I'm doing wrong. When you go talk to non-Muslims, please don't start by saying what's wrong in his religion. No, start by what's wrong in your own community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us this. قُلْ لَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا أَجْرَمْنَا When we talk to other, other the Muslims, we tell them that's the way of da'wah, that's how we make da'wah. You're not going to be questioned about our jara'im, our crimes that we might commit. وَلَا نُسْأَلُ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And we're not going to be questioned about what you do. So when he spoke about his own community, he said, we do crimes. And when he spoke about the other communities, he said just actions. He said actions. He did not say crimes. That this means they are good and we're bad? That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say we need to know what's wrong in our side. What are we lacking? Is it lack of knowledge? Is it lack of acceptance? 
Is it lack of good, good behave, behavior? Is it lack of etiquette? Good manners? Love? Lack of what? We have a lot of problems we need to fix in our community first before we speak to others. The second shift, we need to shift from debates to conversations. And that's what I prefer. I don't go to debates. I only go to conversations, dialogues. Number three, we have to uh, shift from multiple conversations to one conversation. Very important. As I just started by saying, you will never ever find me saying something in this member and go outside talking to non-Muslims and saying something else. Come at tent. I'm invited to come at tent. You will see me saying it. I was there exactly what I tell you over here every single Jum'ah. You can have your own belief, but at the same time, we have to respect other people. From multiple conversations, you know, you go and smile at their faces, and then once you go to your friends, are you like kuffar, you know? We're just going to get them one day. Oh, seriously? Allah doesn't like that. That's a khiyana. That's a betrayal. Allah does not like the betrayal. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next one, we have to shift from competition to collaboration. This works so well in Canada here. Maybe in some other environments, competition works better than collaboration. But in this environment we're living in, people are looking for uh, collaborations to work together and community service and just to have harmony and love uh, among, among the different communities. So these are some of my thoughts on this event. Uh, we need to be open up to these things. We need to speak about them. Jazakumullahu <laughs> khayran. Qudu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu al-azim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu min kulli dhanb in inna wa lakum rahim. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa al-azim sultanik. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammadin fil awwaleen, salli alayhi fil akhireen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma jajal jama'ana al-kareema hatha marquma wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi ma'asuma wa la tajal fina wa la baynana shakiya wa la mahruma. Allahumma alimna ma jahilna واغفر لنا وارحمنا وإلى غيرك لا تكلنا ومن شرور خلقك سلمنا آمين 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 وصل لهم على نبينا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله